All right, guys, bandit signs. Most people do these all wrong. They mess it up. They spend way too much money and simply don't do this effectively enough. And I want to share with you some very tangible ways that you can make this campaign successful for your business to get better leads, better results. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Okay. So this has the potential in your real estate investing business and your real estate wholesaling business. If you take the concepts I'm going to share with you in this video, and I'm going to recommend a previous video, part one of this, how to do it a lot more cost effectively. If you take this very seriously, this has the potential, the potential to add six figures to your business, to do one extra deal per month. Okay. Now, again, I'm not promising results. I'm not guaranteeing results, but I've just seen it in the life of my business. I've seen it in the life of my students businesses. Uh, bandit signs can be very effective. I'm also going to not try to talk you into bandit signs. You make the judgment call for yourself, for your business. If this strategy doesn't resonate with you, that's totally cool. I'm just going to share with you some tips. If you already know bandit signs is something you, you want to do, it's probably why you're watching this video. Um, you're going to get a lot out of this video. So without further ado, I want to dive right in. Let's get going. We're talking about bandit signs. And if you haven't seen part one, I'm going to go ahead and link it above in the top right corner. Uh, the feedback on that video of how to do bandit signs and how to, a, a couple of tips and tricks to save a lot of money and to get better calls, better leads with bandit signs. Um, that video has got a lot of engagement and I highly recommend you checking that out right now. Um, but definitely come back to this video, save this video, add it to a playlist, or just pull it up in a new tab. And we're going to talk about some the specifics because in part one, I asked you to let me know if you guys wanted to hear this topic. And the comments have been through the roof. People have been messaging me, being like, Steven, this is great. This is a huge campaign that I'm doing in my real estate investing business, in my wholesaling business. And I want you to talk in more detail about the specifics of how to do this and how to get deals and to get better results with bandit signs. So with bandit signs, guys, it's not the only thing. Um, and if this resonates with you, awesome. If it doesn't toss it to the side, I'm not saying this is the only strategy that I do in my business. It's absolutely not. I'm not saying you should do this. I definitely want you to critically think. And if this resonates with your heart, perfect. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Uh, but if you are looking to generate more motivated seller leads in your business, if you're looking to do deals, if you're looking to get your real estate wholesaling business off the ground, uh, bandit signs can be a great way to do that. Okay. So again, I'm not here to try to talk you into doing bandit signs. Um, you, you can kind of do your own research, but suffice to say bandit signs have been a very effective lead generation strategy for me, for my students, for people I've worked with over the years. And a lot of the top real estate investors around the country, despite what they might say, they do have some very successful bandit sign campaigns going. And it's just a surefire way that yes, we're in 2018, but it still absolutely works and produces leads. But quite literally, like I talked about in the last video, a lot of people just mess it up. They're not doing it right. They're not doing it effective. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're just not doing bandit signs right. And I want to give you again, not the perfect way of doing it because everybody has their own little spin of creativity and resourcefulness. And that's perfect. That's what makes you a, a, an entrepreneur. That's what makes you unique, but there are some proven methods that get, that get results. And that's what I want to talk about. So let's dive in guys. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I encourage you to browse some of my other videos. I encourage you to subscribe. If you're getting some value out of this content, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I actually read the comments and do my best to subs uh, to not subscribe to your comments, but to respond to your uh, comments and everything. And uh, I have a ton of fun making these videos guys. So let's talk about bandit signs, how to get better deals, how to get better results with your bandit sign campaign. So first let's talk just very briefly about code enforcement. First and foremost, I want you to do everything on the up and up. So it is your business. So therefore your responsibility and you have to decide on your heart. Do you want to do bandit signs? Some people are like, ah, it feels a little sleazy. I don't really want to go putting signs around and other people are like, Hey, you know, it's, it, it's America, you know, we're advertising our business. You know, people put out business cards and, and grocery uh, flyers in the grocery store and at Panera breads and all that type of stuff. 
you know, people are putting stickers on their cars. And, you know, bandit signs are not just used by real estate investors. They're used by, you know, churches and politicians and people who are selling mattresses and buying cars and tutoring services and lawn care services and all sorts of different things, right? But suffice to say, code enforcements, the different law uh, municipalities and the different cities within your, you know, target market, you know, look, suffice to say, they don't love these signs, hence the name bandit signs. Um, so you don't want to do anything illegal. You don't want to do anything that's like, you know, uh, you know, going to get you in trouble or anything like that. So you have to decide if you want to do bandit signs yourself. Um, usually there are a couple of cities within your uh, greater target market, a, a couple of municipalities that just royally hate bandit signs and, and, and they kind of, you know, are, are pretty firm about that. And then you have other areas where they really, you know, you're not going to get much flack and they really, really don't care. So again, uh, it's, it's up to you, you know, definitely look in your area, your city's regulations and things like that if this is really concerning and if it's too concerning, just don't do it. Just pick another lead generation strategy. Uh, but again, my thoughts are, you know, I want to advertise my business. I want to put this information out there. And then if, if a certain city in my area is really kind of hounding me to not put out the signs there, then, then I won't put them out in that specific area. But guys, um, just get resourceful, get creative, and, um, and do your own research and make that determination on yourself. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, certainly, you want to do everything the right way. You want to do things legally. Uh, you know, if it's just absolutely not allowed in your area, um, you know, I would, um, I would not do it, right? Um, if you call each little municipality, I'm sure they're going to tell you, you know, hey, you know, we, we would prefer you not to do that, right? So again, it's just a judgment call that you're going to have to make for yourself. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, so what to say on bandit signs um, and the colors to use? Let's get right into it. I'm going to go over to a site called Dirt Cheap uh, Signs. Not that you should buy signs here. All right here, so to keep on track guys, let's see here. So we're talking about what to say on bandit signs, the colors to use. We're also gonna talk about the phone number and then where to put the signs and stuff like that in this particular part of the video. So um, the reason I'm showing you dirt cheap signs here is because they have this cool little tool that shows us um, just visually what this can look like. So first thing you gotta decide with bandit signs, do you want pre-printed signs or do you want handwritten signs? Um, a lot of people out of just simply demands on their time, they opt to get pre-printed signs. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Boom, 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 boom. They opt to do pre-printed signs and I'm on a website called Dirt Cheap Signs. Now, Dirt Cheap Signs is one of those um, sign companies and they're very good. Uh, actually, if you're going to order signs, um, Dirt Cheap Signs is among one of the most competitive to order bandit signs. But again, I highly recommend you check out part one of this video, which is in the upper right corner, uh, or you can just go over to my channel and look at the past videos and check it out. I show you how to do it much more cost effectively because bandit signs is all about consistency and longevity. If you're doing them con consistent enough, long enough, you're going to be ordering lots of bandit signs and it's lots of shipping and handling lots of extra costs compounded over time. Um, in part one, I show you how to get do a shortcut and, and literally save a lot of money, okay? So the mistake number one a lot of people do is even though Dirt Cheap Signs is one of the best signs to order them from, they'll come over and order pre-printed signs and they'll add a bunch of features. You pay for all the little features that you add. And as you can see here, they put like what's most effective, what works, um, you know, over years of doing this, they've found like what works the best and there's all these, you know, fancy slogans and stuff and there's different features and add on and you can have them double sided and all sorts of different things. And then you have to pay for shipping and handling and, you know, stakes and other things like that. And the cost really starts to skyrocket. So um, the reason I'm showing you this site is to kind of give you that example, but I also love this little tool that they have so that way you guys can see a visual. So uh, one of the first things that you want to decide is you want to decide handwritten or pre-printed. Now do what you can with what you have. Maybe you're limited on time. Maybe you opt to get them pre-printed. 
Now, I know a lot of people who do that and they get decent results. So I'm not saying that my way is the only way. I'm not saying that, you know, if you do it another way, I'm just sharing with you what has worked best for me, what's worked best for my students and other big investors around the country that I've worked with and that I've talked to of what's worked well in their businesses. And I just kind of want to share with you that insight and then you guys can make the best judgment call for your business and what you know what you want to do. So, anyways, I found that pre, uh, I'm sorry, handwritten signs work the best. Okay, handwritten signs work the best because um, you know people have this aversion to corporate advertising. If if you have a handwritten sign, a lot of times it says, "Man, the, the, to our subconscious mind, like it says, like, well, there could be a deal." You know, it's handwritten. Man, maybe this is from like a local investor. You know, he's he's looking to get some more deals here. She, um, there could be you know this there there could be something to this. Whereas like a pre-printed sign says, oh, it's a big scary corporation that's going to take advantage of me, right? So those are just some thoughts subconsciously that that even you know the the small thing of how your sign looks can have a big impact on the results that you get. Okay, all right. So for coloring. My favorite type of sign to use, what I get best results with, is the white corrugated plastic sign with royal blue, uh, with a royal blue sharpie. Now again, I'm um, I'm showing it to you on this website. I believe in handwritten signs, um, so I just want to give you an example of what this would look like. Um, my recommendation also is do not put your website on the bandit sign. You want the phone number and the marketing message to be as big as possible and having a website on there is just taking up unnecessary space, okay? When we're talking about what to say on the bandit signs and the colors to use, um, this is the marketing message that I personally like the best. When I first got started, you know, I thought if I just got creative and came up with my own fancy slogan, my own creative spin on things, that I could outthink what's proven to work. And I recommend not doing that, right? Not getting extra creative with this. We want it to kind of like punch them in the face. We want it to jump out. And a lot of times you have to think and you have to put yourself in the mind of the consumer, um, the mind of someone who's in a stressful situation where they have to sell their house, um, when they have a pain point that's boiling over and they find like the trigger is released and they finally get to that point where they're like, you know what? I got to sell my house. Who are those we buy houses guys? Like people have done enough marketing to know that when somebody like has that need to sell their house, they're going to start thinking like, who are those we buy houses guys? And so you want to just have the marketing message that's very simple of I buy houses or we buy houses. Now to keep integrity, I like to say we buy houses because you know, at least when you first get started, um, it's not going to be your money that's buying the house. It's going to be uh, the end buyer. So I like to speak always on behalf of myself and the partners that we work with. So I like to say we buy houses to keep that integrity instead of Steve buy Steven buys houses or Johnny buys houses or whatever the case is, right? So um, again, you don't need to come up, like as you can see on this other page, there's all sorts of slogans that people have come up with. And again, I'm not knocking these, but the more words you say, the more cluttered, the more overwhelming it, it, it becomes. And um, I just don't care for those. I've always gotten better results with a more simple marketing message. Um, cash for your house is, not a bad one. Okay, so here's another slogan that I've experimented with over the years that's worked very well, and it's adding the word cash because you're speaking with the benefit that um, almost all people want, and that's more money, more cash, and it's letting them know that for their house, you that we, us and our partners, we can pay cash for their house. So it's that's like the biggest marketing message with your real estate wholesaling business that you're putting out there. So there's no reason to use all the other variations and slogans. Um, either we buy houses or we buy houses cash is what I've personally found that works the best. And then just to add a little bit of flair, I've used uh, a dollar sign as the S. And again, cash is what they see first. You can even make this a little bigger. 
um, so if you're just doing we buy houses you can put we buy and then houses in the middle if you're if you're putting we buy houses cash this is the way I do it and I make cash a little bit bigger so that way right in the middle of the sign they're seeing the biggest benefit that they want um, which is them right which, which is cash the biggest benefit that they want for themselves is cash for their house also you want to think of the mindset and the logic that the uh, that the person who's reading the sign is in put yourselves in the shoes of your ideal motivated seller okay the perfect lead you could ever imagine they finally get to that breaking point where they for whatever reason whether they've inherited a home whether they're going through foreclosure whether um, it's a pesky rental property that they they're a landlord and they no longer want it and they get to that snapping point or maybe they're relocating across the country for a job or whatever it is um, and they need to sell and they need to sell right now you know a lot of times they're thinking well especially if they if the house needs a lot of work like one of our you know great leads um, they're thinking who are those investor guys or gals who are those we buy house people and again you know the marketplace has done uh, a lot of the marketing for you so it's not that you need to go out think them you just need to place yourself there because half the time they're gonna call your sign and half the time they're gonna call somebody else's so my friend don't overthink this um, let's get back to the uh, the PowerPoint here just real quick um, so where to put the signs we'll talk about that in just a second uh, we talked about what colors to use and what to say um, let's talk about a phone number real quick so for the longest time I used a Google Voice I no longer use Google Voice I use Grasshopper I highly recommend Grasshopper uh, their customer service is awesome they have a lot of really cool features and I recommend getting a local area code number. You don't want to use a 1-800 number on a bandit sign because it says corporate -y, it says it's not personal. You want to, to be that local guy or gal around the corner who's going to treat them right, who they can easily hop on the phone with, and you can talk about their situation and what's going on and potentially how you can help them. Okay, so I recommend, and I'll have this link in the description of this video, I highly recommend going over to Grasshopper, getting yourself a business phone number that's dedicated for business, that's not your personal cell phone number, especially on the bandit signs. You don't want a bunch of random people calling and blowing up your cell phone. Um, and you can easily uh, hook this up on your cell phone uh, via the app and everything. Uh, but I recommend getting a good Grasshopper phone number that's dedicated so you can track the amount of calls that are coming in from the bandit signs. Um, and, and it's pretty cheap. It's like $12.95 a month. I mean, certainly do what you can with what you have. Um, but let's talk again about the phone number. So if you live in an area that uh, there's a lot of different area codes, then you're going to want to use the full 10-digit phone number, right? However, if you live in your greater target market, your greater area, uh, you live in an area where there's primarily one zip code. You want to go ahead and be a little bit bigger of a player and say, you know what? I want to be bold enough to say I don't even have to enter the area code. I'm the person that you want to talk to. Head over to my phone number here and give me a call, right? Um, and the reason that you want to do that is because you can put the phone number bigger on the sign, right? They're going to assume they are that you're local because you're not even putting the area code. You were bold enough to not even put the area code, and they're just going to locally call you, right? Now, again, you don't want to do that in an area where there's tons of different zip codes, but that's just a little tip that I found to be effective, and it allows you to put your marketing message bigger and to put your phone number bigger, which is what you want when you put these signs out because so many times I see people put out bandit signs and you cannot read the phone number or they try to fit too many words, their website, their phone number, and they try to do too much selling on the bandit signs. So you want to keep it simple. Now again, the colors that I recommend to use are white corrugated plastic and royal blue if you can find it with a huge magnum sharpie, the biggest you can find, permanent marker, and I only want you to write on one side of the bandit sign. You don't want to make the mistake like I've made, like I've had a ton of people I've heard over the years have made, and that is writing on both sides of the sign, thinking that, oh my goodness, people can see this from multiple different directions. 
Well, the problem with that, my friend, is that when it's very sunny out, you're gonna be able to see through the sign and then you can't read anything and that's not good. So you don't wanna do that, okay? Okay, so next I wanna talk about where to put the signs. So where we wanna put these, and there's a couple of ways that I wanna approach this because um, it, it's super important. So, you know, first off, we wanna talk about your target market. And uh, I have other videos in the past of like virtual, and you can go check them out on my channel uh, if you're wholesaling locally or you're wholesaling virtually in a different market. Um, and I'm actually getting ready to record an upcoming video on some of the best cities to wholesale in, some of the best cities to invest in, um, and kind of how you should go about choosing a target market or some helpful things to think about. So if you guys would love for me to do a video on that, please let me know in the comments because again, I wanna make sure I'm recording videos that you guys wanna hear and topics that you wanna learn about, but I'm thinking about doing a video on that because I get a lot of questions and just quite literally over the years, I uh, over on my uh, coaching and mentoring website, stephenhowmentoring.com, one of the things I, I offer is a free strategy session for us to hop on a call and talk for 30 or 45 minutes about your business and you know what you're struggling with, what you wanna accomplish, and to possibly see if we're a good fit to, to work together and to partner up and to accomplish your next five deals. And so I've talked to hundreds and thousands of people over the years. And one of the things that you know I've talked with is people that live in smaller cities, right? And they wonder, man, will wholesaling work here? Will bandit signs work here? Will XYZ work here? Or do I need to go invest in this bigger city? And so one of the things we'll talk about is like, the more rural your, your location is, kind of like out in the country, like wholesaling doesn't tend to work as well in those areas. You wanna be in a big enough market. And we'll talk more about that in another video. And by the time I record that video, I'll be sure to link it to this video. Uh, but again, let me know in the comments if that's something you want me to talk about in the future. Uh, so again, you wanna be investing in a big enough target market, in a big enough city, and, and that's where you wanna put the bandit signs. This is not going to be as effective if you're kinda of doing this way out in the country, uh, in a very small city, a small town. Um, you're not going to get as good of results. Um, so I think that's really important when we talk about where to put the signs. So assuming you, you've chosen the right target market, market you're in a big enough uh, area where you're doing your wholesaling business where you've set up shop you know virtually speaking you don't have to have a a, a brick and mortar business obviously uh, where you've set up shop to, to dominate and to be an awesome wholesaler and an investor who serves other people and you do great work um, you want to put bandit signs where they're going to get the most exposure and a couple of places are on and off ramps to the freeway to, to the highway um, you want to put bandit signs there, uh, some of the most prominent exits in your area. You also want to put up bandit signs on huge uh, four-way traffic intersections in some of the most populated areas. Uh, also in some of the most populated areas, uh, Walmarts and Home Depot and Lowe's and Menards and stores like that. Um, you're going to get uh, a lot of investors and contractors and you know people who are doing renovations to their home and things like that seeing your bandit signs. Um, also, what you want to do is you want to kind of take notice and take inventory and almost become very observant to marketing all around you. And as a real estate investor, more than a real estate investor and as a wholesaler, and I could do a whole separate training on this. I could do a whole separate course on this. Uh, having the mind of a marketer, understanding how marketing and advertising and branding and offering value and offering solutions, um, that's everything, right? When you start to understand some of those things, what I know about you is your real estate business is probably going to take off because it's not always about real estate. It's about understanding people. It's about understanding the problems that they're going through. It's about understanding how to offer solutions. And it's about understanding how to market to them in a way that's not sleazy, that has integrity, and that actually helps them, right? So I say all that because number one, it's Actually, that, that sounded pretty wise and I'm pretty, you know, that, that's pretty cool. But no, um, I'm, I'm thankful for the mentors and the people that have taught me some of these powerful concepts. But um, I say that because you want to kind of start paying attention. If you're not paying attention, you need to pay attention to 
marketing and advertising and how things are going on around you because you're getting marketed to every day so many marketing messages but what I'm, what I'm talking about in this video what I want you to pay attention to is I want you to pay attention to where people are putting out their bandit signs where people are offering mattresses and um, we buy cars and other bandit signs we buy houses and things like that and a lot of people get scared by competition they think oh man um, I've been seeing people put out bandit signs in this part of town forever, man. They, they have that territory dominated. I can't, I can't do it. I would recommend putting up your signs in very similar areas because especially if those bandit signs have been out for a long, long time, weekend after weekend after weekend, they're probably putting them out in those areas because it works and they're getting results or else they wouldn't keep putting them out there for months and years. So if you see different areas around your city, around your town where signs seem to be working, where there's a lot of signs always, that's where I recommend you putting your signs. But again, you always want to think about exposure. Now, what people do is they kind of go overboard sometimes, and this is where they're not, um, they do it out of good intentions, but they're not as resourceful and um, kind of like waste a lot of effort and time and money and stuff like that is on a four-way stop, sometimes they'll put like eight signs in every possible conceivable direction. You don't necessarily need to do that. I'd say maybe put two signs, possibly four, um, one sign on an exit off-ramp. Um, you don't need it on both sides of the road. Just, just pick the most prominent side. Um, so you don't need to necessarily go overboard. And you, you don't want them to be like, you know, for example, if there's a a very popular street in your area you don't need a sign like every hundred feet right you want to you want to spread it out through the general vicinity as much as possible but you want them to be decently uh, dense as well if that makes sense so you kind of have to you're, you're you're gonna get better at this over time is what I'm saying like you're gonna kind of learn by experience the areas where you get more calls and the ultimate thing with this is a lot of testing as well um, you're going to learn what gets more calls and what doesn't and things like that but these are some general things that i know that work that i want to share with you guys all right guys so let's keep this moving so when we talk about where to put the sign here's a couple of super ninja tips that i want to share with you that's going to make this more effective for yourself so You've probably seen out there, if you've been researching this or doing this, there's a few different ways to do this. You see the H stakes um, that you can put in the ground. So you can put those wire stakes in the ground. You can do wooden stakes in the ground. Or you've probably seen in your area at some point in time, again, if you're paying attention, that um, you know people will nail them up onto telephone poles, okay? Now, one tip here is a, is a, a tool that I recommend that you get and that is called a sign stapler. And they have a little video here that allows you to hang them up really, really high, an extra four feet higher than you could actually reach without you um, getting out a ladder. So what a lot of people started to do is they realized if they hung them up higher on telephone poles, they were a little bit more difficult for, um, they were a little bit more difficult for people to, pull down so their signs would stay up a lot longer so they wouldn't have to put them out in that location every single solitary weekend right so uh, people would even pull out step ladders and then people got resourceful and um, so I highly recommend you go check out this site called sign stapler I'll have it in the link in the description and you can go um, go through that and get yourself this sign stapler tool you pay for it once and you have the tool and it's going to save you a ton of time. Um, so what I recommend and I found as a very good combination is doing um, half of the metal H stakes, the wire stakes and half of the um, nailing it to the to, uh, telephone pole using the sign stapler um, because there's not always a wooden telephone pole in the best location for your bandit sign. So if you simply say, you know what, Steven, I'm just going to nail things into a wooden telephone pole because I want them to stay up high and I want them to stay up as long as possible. Uh, and that's all I want to do. Well, then a lot of times that eliminates the, the, the off ramp to a freeway or an on ramp, depending on how your city and stuff is set up. And you're going to lose some prime locations because there's not always a wooden telephone pole where you need it to be, right? 
Whereas if you go the opposite route and you say I'm only going to use H stakes, again, you're missing out a little bit. So if this is going to be a prominent lead strategy for your business, which again, if you take what I'm saying here seriously, this can add six figures to your business per year because uh, all that means is one extra deal a month. And I can't tell you how many countless times um, I've contacted investors where this is the lead source in their business. I know so many investors that they literally do three, four, five deals a month from Bandit Signs alone. So uh, this can be very, very powerful and you want to take it seriously. Um, what a lot of people do is they get really motivated based off of a seminar or something they read or a course they went through and they'll order a hundred Bandit Signs and they'll put them all out in one weekend. They're pre-printed. Um, they get some calls, maybe not the best calls. They don't know what to do with the calls. And then they just go to a different strategy because they're like, man, that was a lot of hard work. I got no results. And, you know, I'm frustrated. So if that's you, my friend, I encourage you, number one, not to give up. And I encourage you, number two, to, to think a little bit deeper because when you see very successful investors around the country, it's not always that they're doing a completely different strategy than what you've maybe tried or what you've done. A lot of times they're doing it with a purpose, they're doing it with a specific intention, and there's a strategy behind what they're doing, and they're doing it with a little bit of a twist, they're doing it a little bit differently, and almost always they're doing it um, more powerfully and with more confidence and a lot more consistency, okay? And so I, I want you to be able to see that even in this training here, in this video, that there's some really powerful things to think about that when you do them in a certain way, you get exponentially better results. And again, this isn't the only way, but I'm sharing with you what I've found to be a great little combination that works really, really well. Okay, so guys, what I want to do is I actually want to end this video here in just a minute because... Um, I'm realizing the length of this video is getting a little long. I want to keep these videos pretty concise out of respect of you and, I, and, and your attention span and, um, and just to keep these concise, you know what I mean? So what I want to do, if you guys loved this video, uh, let me know it in the, in the comments. Share this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you guys would like a part three, um, I want to split this up into three parts, but I want to hear it. I don't want to record it if you guys don't really want to hear it. So let me know in the comments that you want a part three um, and any questions you have and things like that. Um, so in part three, what we would talk about is the volume, the amount of signs that you should put out and how often you should put them out to get the best results, okay? Um, we're going to talk about um, seasons and, and even the time of uh, I didn't put this on there, but the best time to put them out, the time of day, the time of week, the, you know, all that type of thing. Uh, we're going to talk, and this is really powerful once you start to scale this, um, this lead strategy for motivated sellers for your real estate investing and wholesaling business, is um, how to outsource this. Because I'm going to assume that you might not want to put out bandit signs um, every weekend for the rest of your life right but you probably want a 10 or 15 or twenty thousand dollar wholesale deal coming in your business every week of your life for the for the rest of your life right for the rest of your time doing this business so how do we do that right you know if we're not putting in the work if we're not doing the income producing activity if we're not advertising or marketing our investing business we're not going to be getting calls. We're not going to be doing deals. So how do we how do we resolve that? Well, one of the ways is we hire somebody to do this. Um, there's a time and place for it. There's a way that we should do it. So I'm going to talk about where to advertise, how much you should charge, and how to increase retention. Because one of the most frustrating things that I experienced is when I started paying someone to do this. You know, after a couple weeks or after a month or two, they might fall off. And so I found a couple of cool ways to to hire the right people and to keep them on for a little bit longer or a lot longer and it just is a less of a headache so that way again this more this this lead strategy is more um, you know last it's lasting it has longevity which is important consistency and longevity are, are such big things um, and then I'm going to share two foolproof ways to ensure to almost Guarantee, I can't use the word guarantee. I don't want to use the word guarantee, but to almost ensure that you get results with this strategy. Because if you do this, you will get results. Um, 
and, and I want to share with you two ways to cut that I kind of ensure to make sure that my you know students who are doing this and you know myself that you get results with this strategy right so I'm going to share with you those two ways um, and then what to expect with the type of calls you're getting um, how important consistency is how you should handle the calls what you should expect because I believe expectations are you know so 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 important now obviously with this training there's a lot more than even this that goes into it right so I'm sharing with you guys a very powerful snapshot because I want you to be able to go get results even from this free content alone but obviously um, I can't cover everything there is to know in a training like this so if you guys would like more information I highly recommend I've actually been getting uh, I've been doing these videos a ton of people have been jumping in my ultimate wholesaling blueprint my step-by-step -step wholesaling course video course the link it's one of the first links in the description I highly recommend you checking that out because it's from the very first day in your business if you don't know a single thing about wholesaling all the way through getting your first deal done um, having a powerful buyers list title company all of those things and then scaling your business I don't even stop at just getting your first deal done because I don't want you to be a one-hit wonder so guys um, and even with this lead strategy a lot of people mess it up when they start getting calls right I could teach you how to get your phone and your email flooded with leads but if you don't know how to analyze deals if you don't know how to talk to people if you don't know how to do those things you know you're gonna you're gonna that's gonna be the next step to learn so again um, and we'll be covering those topics as well in videos but I highly recommend you checking out the course if you guys want a step-by-step -step game plan and you you like this content and you want to dive deeper um, definitely check that out and then again if you're interested in speaking with me on the phone um, doing a one-on-one -on -one complimentary strategy session um, of course I only want you to do that you know if you are super serious and interested in your business and you have to apply for it I don't just do it for everyone um, you can head over to stephenhowmentoring.com and there could be a possibility of us working together on your first five deals um, and you can get the details again in the description but either way guys I hope you got a ton of value out of this video if you did please 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 hit that like button let me know in the comments that you want to see a part three and we will cover uh, these bottom four bullet points and uh, in a lot of detail and have a lot of fun doing it so again I enjoyed this video a ton I hope it brought value to you and uh, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video and I will uh, I'll, I'll do that next video just as soon as I see some comments rolling in and that'll be one of the most recent videos and I have a whole slew of topics uh, these videos are gonna be coming even more consistently guys I'm super pumped about them and the feedback has been absolutely tremendous so I'll see you guys in the next video